AI workloads are taking a bigger importance in our world today, as we've seen with ChatGPT and many other tools that are now used on a daily basis. Now, the only issue with those tools is that they do take up a lot of energy. AI is taking up huge market share in terms of data center and is bringing up the, uh, the consumption of electricity to record highs. Now, how do we alleviate that problem? The way we do it is with immersion cooling. Immersion cooling is able to take a data center which traditionally runs in a PUE of 1.6, which means for every watt I put into a server, I have to put 0.6 into the infrastructure and bring it below one. Now, we don't stop there with immersion cooling. It's not just about the cooling infrastructure. It's also about the reuse of heat. So then taking that heat and reusing it for other applications, we can create an impact in terms of PUE that's you know, 0.5 or less. Once you get into those kind of zones, well, at this point, now you're, you're almost having a positive impact. So we firmly believe that the future of AI is in immersion cooling. Now, in terms of performance, now it, you don't lose anything in terms of performance, you actually gain. A typical GPU will run at about 74% of its total capacity in an air-cooled environment. Whereas in an immersion cooling environment, it can run at 100%. So you do get that 20 plus percent bonus for free. So it's definitely something uh, to look at. So the biggest hurdle to immersion cooling, I would say, is existing infrastructure. Although people have a misconception that immersion cooling can't go in an existing data center, it's actually very easy to retrofit current data centers to immersion cooling. Now let's look at the facts. Typical data centers run at about a 10 kilowatt rack density. Immersion cooling runs at around 100 kilowatts a rack. So you can do a retrofit and actually gain space in a typical data center. The other thing is on a cooling infrastructure basis, typical data centers have things like chillers, cracks, cooling towers. In an immersion cooling environment, we're only talking about a dry cooler and a couple of pumps. So it's greatly simplified infrastructure. And finally, on electrical basis, there's absolutely no difference between a data center that's immersion cooled or an air cooled data center. So there may seem like there are hurdles, but there aren't truly hurdles. They're only in our mind. So when we compare immersion cooling to direct to chip liquid cooling, now these have some similar benefits, but there are very distinct differences. In a direct to chip liquid cooled solution, you're typically going to have a very heavy amount of piping in the back of the rack. You're going to have manifolds, you're going to have pipes going to each rack, you're going to eat up a lot of PCI slots, and it's generally a, a rather complex solution. There's a lot involved. It's not very simple, and it's typically quite hard to replace new hardware with the same infrastructure. So you are going to spend on infrastructure almost every time you add new servers or replace old servers. In immersion cooling, it's very simple. You have a tank, you put in your servers. If you want to replace them one day, you just slide them out, put new ones in. It's, it's much easier in, in terms of working with the system and maintaining it than it is in a direct-to-chip liquid-cooled solution. So immersion cooling on data center design definitely has some very big positive impacts. The first of which is space. Now, when we look at a typical data center, an air-cooled data center, you'll see these massive buildings, you know, for a 30, 50 megawatt data center. Today, in immersion cooling, those same footprints would do 150 to 250 megawatts. So we're greatly increasing the density of a data center. So now let, let's put that in perspective. Now, if we start reducing the size of these data centers in terms of their physical space, then where they can be implemented becomes a lot more open. We're talking about downtown cores, we're talking about you know, pretty much a, a field in the middle of nowhere. The, these have the capabilities to be deployed pretty much anywhere. Now once we have that, plus the energy efficiency of these data centers, the heat recuperation applications are almost endless. To name a few, we see the data center of the future used for district heating, used for heating of greenhouses and used for heating of industrial processes, such as desalination, carbon capture, and many other applications. So the environmental impacts 
are the typical ones you'll have when building any green field or any data center. So you want to be looking at uh, what kind of greenery there is on the field, trees, uh, vegetation, animals, um, and also habitats for any types of different creatures. So past that, uh, there's nothing more specific for a, an immersion cooling data center. So it actually takes less footprint, less issues, less problems. So it's actually easier to condense this in a space which has little to no impact or even a positive impact on uh, the place that's being constructed. So immersion cooling will definitely keep pace for the first few years, but there will need to be extra technology that will add on to immersion cooling. Now the beauty with Hypertech is we've been developing these different uh, technologies for quite a while. We've actually developed some innovative CPU cooling technologies that go into immersion cooling and many other enhancers. Now the reasons these, these are needed is the chips of the future will be consuming multiple kilowatts. Now to be able to cool that, there needs to be new technology. And again, the good news is Hypertech's already there. Thank you.